Hey, it's time for Week 12 College Football right here, the Why Lose Campus pod. I am Lance Taylor, whylose.com forward slash Lance, whylose.com forward slash Lance, daily 49, weekly 99, monthly 299. We're already heating up in college hoops. Uh, we're coming off back-to-back -back incredible Saturdays in college football for you. So we're on a heater there, um, and you get everything. So when when you purchase at Why Lose Campus, under whylosecampus.com forward slash Lance. You're going to get all of our college football action. All of our college basketball action is up and available for you. And right now I'm going to give you a six pack of winners absolutely free right here on the Why Lose pod. Six pack of winners coming up. A couple of things as we go into week 12 here. The top four teams are on the road this week. Only the second time this has happened since 2015. Uh, so again, we have maybe an opportunity for more upsets. Uh, which we've seen a ton of them so far in college football. Um, and really what's what's just been insane about this year is you've got an undefeated BYU, you've got an undefeated Indiana, you've got South Carolina and Vanderbilt. They're, they're great stories. Colorado's a great story. But when you look at the combination of Washington and Michigan, teams that played for the national championship, and at that point you had, uh, what, 13-1 and Washington, 14-0 and Michigan, now those two teams are combined 10 and 10, five and five each straight up. Both of those teams still trying to get bowl eligible blows me away where Florida state is losing 10 of 11 straight up is insane as well. But that's where we are right now in college football. Okay. So we're going to start the ACC and uh, this game, Virginia in South Bend against Notre Dame. It's a three thirty NBC game. You look at Virginia under Tony Elliott. It's an improved team in year one. He won three games in year two. He won three games since, and, and he's already got five, so he's he's looking to double his win total or match his first two years in Charlottesville, sitting at five and four and three and three. They have been super competitive. You look at Notre Dame, though, the combination of Jeremiah Love, Riley Leonard, the first duo to each have a rushing touchdown in eight or more consecutive games for the first time in the history of all of Notre Dame. Now, Riley Leonard's got to get a little more consistent. He's got to identify some weapons on the perimeter. But Notre Dame, since they've been playing this abbreviated ACC schedule since 2017, they are 40-5 and five against the ACC. Uh, Marcus Freeman has already, already lost his one major favorite game. He's lost as a 14-plus point favorite in South Beach already three times. Now, if you go back and you look at the history of Notre Dame football from 1998 to 2021, they only had three of those losses over those 23 years, and now Marcus Freeman has done it in less than three seasons. Big number here, Notre Dame minus the 22 and a half. I think they're starting to cook at the right time. They know they went out, go 11 and one in the regular season. They are getting in to the college football playoff. So Notre Dame is going to be our first pick of our six pack of winners right here at why lose, why lose.com forward slash Lance Again, daily 49, weekly 99, monthly 299, jump on board and win with us. Next game, we're going to stay in the ACC Louisville heading to the farm to take on Stanford. This Stanford team is absolutely garbage. Tyler Shuck and what Jeff Brom have got going right now, this Louisville team, their three losses are two teams that have a combined two losses. So when you start to look at the losses for Louisville and all one possession games, and then what Louisville was able to do in Death Valley to Clemson just a couple of weeks ago, defense is playing great. Brom's calling a hell of a game. And you look at Stanford, they have lost not only six straight, uh, six in a row straight up, also six in a row against the number. Since 2020, the Cardinal as a home dog are one and 18 straight up, five and 14 against the number, and they have lost 17 straight. Give me Louisville in this spot. They're peaking at the right time. And unfortunately, under Troy Taylor, this Stanford team is just stuck in mud. It's a big number to lay on the road, especially with Louisville. But I feel confident laying the 20 and a half. That game, 330 ACC Network. Probably nobody watching that game to begin with. Next game, we are going to a team that we have been fading basically all year in the Big 12. BYU has started 9th and 0, 9-0 for the fifth time in school history. Um They've got three wins in the final two minutes, including last week where we had Utah, and we all had to sweat that out because they get a safety in that situation. We've got some problems, but BYU should not have won that game. Um, I know Utah's athletic director had a lot to say about it and was for, uh, find a full 40K for it. This BYU team, I think they peaked in October. I think they're going the wrong direction right now. Uh, they've beaten SMU, Oklahoma State, and Utah all in the final two minutes. Um, you look at this Kansas team, 
They opened one and five, four of those losses by six or less points. They've won two of three. They played their best game where we backed them last week against Iowa State as a short two and a half point underdog. And Kansas absolutely rolled them there. Um, I think this is a bad spot for BYU. I know BYU, we hyped them up. They were kind of the vampire team. Everybody talked about what BYU was able to do at night coming into the season, weren't nearly as good during the day. They've been winning games at day. During the night, it doesn't matter. But I do think they've taken a step back. And I don't know if the team is tiring, if lack of depth is showing. But I do think Kansas in this spot is the right way. That's a late night 10-15 ESPN game. But we are going to take Kansas plus the two and a half. Uh, that total is 56 and a half. Kind of lean the over there. Um, I think what's interesting about this, if you have, you know, any of your typical layman's walking into whatever sports book it is, and they look up at the marquee and they're like, damn, three and six Kansas at 9-0 and BYU, and this number is only two and a half. There is a reason the number is that low. I think more so because BYU is going one direction. Kansas, hard to say they're going this direction at three and six, but they have one, two of three, and Jalen Daniels played extremely well, well last week against Iowa State. Our next game, we are going to the Big Ten. This is a 330 CBS kick. Penn State, you start to look at the resume. Who have they beaten? Penn State's best win, probably against five lost USC. I don't think Penn State is very good, but James Franklin in these situations is very good. 23 straight wins as double-digit favorites. Um, he is 72-4 and four straight up and 47-27 and 27 against the number in these spots. Uh, as a road favorite since 2022, you guessed it, Franklin, 11-0 straight up, 10-1 and one against the number. Against lower competition, they come to play. You look at this Purdue team, they are absolutely awful. They have yet to win a Big Ten game, one of four teams right now in the Power Four that have yet to win a conference game. This is a team that has lost four games by at least 35 points. The last time a team lost by 35 or more in five games in one season, wait for it, 2022 Colorado. This shows you the job that Deion Sanders has done there. That team was absolutely awful. This Purdue team is awful. I am laying 28 and a half on the road with Penn State. That is a massive number, uh, but I don't even blink twice at that one. Now we go to the SEC. Uh, next game up, it is an 11 o'clock, or excuse me, a noon game. ABC, Texas going to Fayetteville to take on Arkansas. Used to be a big Southwest Conference matchup back in the day. And you start to look at the matchups over the last seven between these two. And this goes back to the 90s. Uh, Texas, just two and five straight up, one and six against the number in their last seven against Arkansas. Texas has turned it over two or more times in five of seven games. They turn it over multiple times against this Arkansas team that right now is fifth nationally in total offense with Bobby Petrino calling these plays. You can get a really good Taylor Green. Now, sometimes you can get a shaky Taylor Green. They're going to need some help from their defense. You look at this Arkansas defense, they forced five turnovers against Mississippi State. They forced five against Auburn, but they failed to come up with a turnover in four of their last five games. They have to force a couple of turnovers against Texas. And I think Texas, even with Quinn Ewers playing his cleanest game of the year this past weekend against Florida, I think Texas will struggle a little bit in this early game on the road in Fayetteville. I like Arkansas plus the points here. I'm catching 13 and a half. That total is 57 and a half. I look for this game to probably play over, too, but I'm going with the side. I'm taking the Hogs plus the 13 and a half. Our final game, the big game in the SEC, Tennessee against the Georgia squad. Hard to believe. Georgia, when you start to look at what they have done over the last few years, this is a team that just didn't lose to anybody outside of Alabama. Um, Georgia, 26 and 2 the last three years in the SEC, and now they're sitting at five and two in conference this year. An extremely strange year. Um, they are last in the SEC right now with explosive runs. Um, they just haven't been good in the department of having these explosive plays. Uh, Carson Beck is struggling holding on to the football. Beck has thrown 12 picks over his last six games. First SEC quarterback with that many picks over six games since 2020. And this is the guy that we viewed as maybe not only the best quarterback in college football coming into the 2024 season, we also viewed him as maybe the number one overall pick. Um, so he has struggled. Tennessee on the other side, it's a big question mark. Whether Nico's going to play in this game, he left last week's game at halftime. He didn't come back. Um, this defense has been fantastic. And here's the way it works with Tennessee. 
They've only scored 30 plus once in SEC play this year, but through their first nine games of the season, they have yet to give up more than 19 points. The last teams that have done that, the last four teams that have held their first nine opponents to 19 or less, all won national championships. I don't think Tennessee's that balanced. I don't think they're balanced enough to go into Athens with an unknown situation at the quarterback position. Look, Dylan Sampson has been great on the ground for this Tennessee team. First SEC player with a rushing touchdown in each of his first nine games of the season since Leonard Fournette and Derrick Henry both did it back in 2015. He's been great, but knowing uh, Glenn Schumann, the defense coordinator in Athens, and Kirby Smart, it's going to be all about stopping Dylan Sampson and whether you get a 85% Nico or you get a backup quarterback who has not been good in a couple of spots um, significantly against Alabama, where his one attempt was a pick, that could be a problem for Tennessee. I think either way, they are all about shutting down Dylan Sampson, and I think Georgia is going to uh, bounce back in a big way. This number is pretty massive based on where these two teams are right now, the way Tennessee's playing defense, with Georgia minus the 11. But I think coming off the embarrassment in Oxford, losing that game by 18, I think Georgia bounces back. I think, actually, Carson Beck against a really good Tennessee defense has a pretty good game here, and I do like Georgia minus the 11 points. So to recap right here on the Why Lose pod, and again, we do this each and every week. We've got a six-pack of winners for you. we got Notre Dame minus the 22-and-a-half, Louisville minus the 20-and-a-half, Kansas plus the 2-and-a-half, Penn State minus the 28-and-a-half, Georgia minus the 11 in Arkansas plus the 13 and a half. Jump on board with us. Not only do we have winners up right now in college hoops, all week we'll have college football as well. And then Saturday, we're going to throw another huge slate at you. Uh, again, we were 7-2 last Saturday. We've been killing it on college football Saturdays, heating up in college hoops as well. Daily 49, weekly 99, monthly 299. You get it all right here. Whylose.com forward slash Lance. You guys have a great weekend. Let's cash some tickets.